Good morning, it's Tom Asprey with the Technical Corner. Uh, before the opening on November 19th. Uh, thought I'd do a video update this morning instead of a written one because it was a pretty interesting day Thursday that uh, confused many already confused investors. Let's look at some of the technical evidence here. This hourly chart shows the S&P bottomed out uh, right at 1020 a.m. and spent the rest of the day basically moving higher and closed up almost 16 points. Market internals, however, did not support that. Uh, 1,170 advances, 2,196 declines on the NYSE. NASDAQ was uh, even a little worse, uh, clearly two to one negative there. Before the open, we got the latest data from the AAII survey showing that the number of bullish investors dropped sharply this week, uh, likely due to the increased inflationary fears and, as I discussed in last weekend's Forbes article, uh, the drop in consumer sentiment. You can see we went from 48% bullish down to 38.8, um, still slightly above the long-term average. You can see there was a 5%, roughly almost 6% change in the neutral camp, so 28%. Now 34%, uh, and there's a slight uptick in the bearishness. This sort of pullback you know, is more typical, in my experience, of a correction rather than a top. Oftentimes, uh, bullish sentiment will will top out, you know, ahead of prices, and it's the bullish numbers that I find uh, the most valuable uh, and have for 20, 30 years. So, what was so surprising about today's? action this is a comparative chart a 60 minute so in red we have the cues so you can see they they declined in that first hour but uh you stayed positive territory basically um from based on wednesday's close and then spent the rest of the day moving higher uh, that was in contrast to in blue here we have the s p you know it was uh dropped to new correction lows here you know and then you know edged up into positive territory and then the big market, the NYSE Composite, which is the common stocks, they had a rough day. You know, we went from, you know, down almost over 1% here uh, after 10 o'clock. They rebounded, but still closed, you know, down, you know, um, over 1% on the session. Uh, this is consistent with the relationship between growth and value I've been discussing for a number of weeks. This is a weekly chart of the uh, S&P uh, growth index, the IGX versus the value, the IVX. You can see we've broken out uh, of this resistance line eight in August. We had a nice pull pullback here to the 20-day EMA. It works even on ratios apparently, and then have surged straight to the upside. You know, as growth has increased its lead over value. Uh, those subscribers, if you use stock charts, and I've sent out links to this chart before, but if you'd like one. You know, uh, you know, drop me a line and we'll send you a, a link so you can incorporate this chart into your stock charts analysis. This is the other growth value indication. So this is the IWF, which is a growth ETF, and IWD. Uh, we recommended the uh, growth ITF on Monday and it's had a real good move to the upside here. You can see we're getting close to this long-term term resistance that goes back to the fall of uh, 2020. So MACDs, you know, broke this downtrend here and are still looking positive here. Slight divergence in the histogram, but not really a concern at this stage. Of course, looking at the major trend analysis, it's still clearly positive. You know, it's the weekly chart of the SPY. The S&P 500 AD line, you know, has made another new high here. It's well above its moving average. Um, stocks only also made a new high, but it's you know, acting, you know, not as strong as the SPY or the QQQ. And then, of course, we have the NYSE All AD line, which completed a major trading range, you know, in October at that October low. And that's a pretty strong sign. I mean, it's declining right now. You'd really have to drop below the lows from August and September to say that was a fake uh, breakout. Um, I do not think that's likely heading into the end of the year. If we drill down to the daily analysis, this is one of these screens I use to teach my students about advanced decline analysis. We have the NASDAQ 100 here on the top, clearly the leader. You can see it staged the breakout here 
you know, um, and uh, after forming a nice little divergence, it made another new high this week. It's pulled back. So, you know, it's, you know, it's certainly a bit extended. I mean, it's above its, you know, um, moving average by a wide margin. So any sort of pullback here should be well supported. Uh, S&P 500 AD line looks a little weaker. It's pulled back, but it also made a new high and a major breakout. So that's where the major resistance stands. And you drill down the S&P 1500. That encompasses the mid cap 400, small cap 600, and the large cap 500. Also a breakout. Uh, looking back, you know, historically, rarely would you see, of course, we don't have 1500 data going back past 2008. But if you look at the NYSE composite, you rarely see a breakout um, like that that isn't followed by higher prices in the next several months. So stocks only here. And also broke out marginally and is pulled back. It's right at its lower uh, Stark band equivalent with Thursday's close. And then the NYSE all, you know, is looking quite good. Uh, through Trade Navigator, you can see we just has had this nice classic sort of little pullback here. And, uh, you know, the AD line has already made a new high. That suggests we should move above, you know, the high at around, uh, I think it was 40 I added on the pivot levels. You can see the the R1 here as has been reached as at 398.15. Uh, the R2 is a possibility at 410.20. That certainly gets the market's attention. OBV here is also positive. So what are some of the concerns? Well, as I mentioned, you know we have been trading up near the weekly Stark bands here in the QQQs. Um, last time we've seen that since the September of uh, 2020. Um, this condition, particularly with the new strong new highs in the AD line on a weekly basis, can last for a while, but it does allow for, you know, even a pullback, you know, it, within this three week range. Typically, those of you who've used Stark bands, you get above the upper barn, you'll either consolidate or correct. So, uh, I think consolidation looks to be the most likely scenario right in here, but it is, uh, you know, higher risk area to buy. So you have to pick your entry levels closely. The other major concern is in the high-low analysis. Looks the most negative on the NASDAQ composites. We have a NASDAQ composite here. Nice run. We're heading back towards the highs. You can see a nice surge in the new highs with prices. New highs are much lower now, but that's not so much of a problem as we've seen a sharp increase in the number of new lows. That's characteristic of the narrowly based rally. You know, the Qs and the S&P are, are pushing the the market higher but most stocks are not doing that that's why we had almost 400 new lows in the nasdaq in thursday's session and was one of the reasons i wanted to do this video we can also see that the nyse new lows moved up to 100 still below these peaks in here but not really an encouraging sign here and you can see the number of new stocks making new highs has declined as the markets moved up Put call ratios show no increase in bearishness, so that's also a, possible, a problem. You can see this is the index put call, 133, so it means like there are 30% more puts bought than calls, but you can see it spikes often when the market corrects, uh, as it did, you know, near the October lows. Uh, overall, put call ratio here is, you know, still lots of crazy call buyers out there. When some of you may realize a couple weeks ago there were $51 billion in um, Tesla options uh, bought uh, that was before Tesla had the big drop so I would imagine most of those options have, have not fared too well I'd like to finish up with this chart of the futures uh, you can see we had this big reversal we got down to the stark minus band you know we're trying to hold we're down about 15 points in the futures right now so we're right into support here you can see the 20 period EMA is at 46.98 so we're trading about 46.90 so you need to get above that level first. Um, the overall breakout, you know, was was pretty much forecasted before Monday's open. And the overall chart still remains positive. Um, you know, you have the MACDs that flip back to negative and you're more worried if the MACDs drop below these lows and the histogram drops below this lows. That would be consistent with a, a more severe decline. I wanted to update that futures chart that was done before the market opened about 8 a.m. Eastern time. Now it's about a quarter to 12 on Friday, and you can see that the futures held that support we were talking about. 
Um, we were trading around uh, 36 uh, or 46.90 up to 47.04. So we got above that 20 period EMA at 46.98, which is an encouraging sign. Not a lot of change in the MACDs at this point. And it'll be interesting to see what we can do in the afternoon. If we can continue to move higher and close well off the lows, that'll be a positive sign as I often teach and, and preach the weekly closes are more important. Most of my articles I contribute to Forbes.com are also posted on the Viper Report, and you can find them there, and also some more indicators on the technical studies that I use and teach about. Of course, if you have any questions about the video, you can always email me at Tom at Viper Report, and I'll do my best to get back to you in a timely fashion. If you're interested in learning more about the technical indicators I discussed in this video, you might want to consider uh, the special offer we're running right now. It's $199 for 90 minutes of one-on-one -on -one trading. And uh, basically, once you sign up, uh, we'll talk and determine what you would like to learn or analyze your trades uh, and see how I can make your performance better. It's a sort of a unique opportunity. I know most people in the business and don't know of anyone that offers this. So the link is posted on YouTube. So hope you consider it and hope you have a great weekend. Thank you very much.